Hi everybody, welcome back. We're looking today at Jeremy Duff, The Elements of New Testament Greek. We're at the start of chapter four, a whole new chapter today, headed prepositions. Now, if you already know what a preposition is, and if you're completely comfortable with the idea of a preposition, then you can skip right past this video onto the next one, where we'll start looking at how prepositions function in Greek. But this video is for you if, like me, you haven't up at the point where you started learning Greek, you hadn't had a formal education in grammar, perhaps by doing Latin or by doing formal English grammar. If you had the kind of education that didn't expose you to uh, detailed grammatical concepts like prepositions, and you need a bit of help just getting your bearings. There is some stuff ab about this in Duff, and he's got a helpful introduction right there at the start of, of chapter four. But I want to help you here just to get your bearings, just to explain in simple terms using English, what a preposition is. So here goes. A preposition is a word or a group of words which joins the main part of a sentence to a noun phrase. The noun phrase might be a noun or it might be a group of words which together function as a noun doesn't matter, but the point is that it's a noun phrase in the sense that it behaves like a noun, and as such, the preposition, and here's the key point, because the preposition joins that noun phrase to the main part of the sentence, it then expresses the relationship between the main part of the sentence and that noun phrase. So just to say it again, a preposition joins a noun or a noun phrase to the main part of a sentence and as such, it expresses the relationship between the main part of the sentence and that noun phrase. Before we look at an example in English, just a couple of other technical terms, because you'll hear me use these, and you may hear other grammarians and teachers use these, so just to help you get your bearings of what they're talking about. Um, the main part of a sentence, that's just a loose term for what comes before the preposition, and it will be the main part of a sentence because it will contain the main verb. The the noun phrase that comes after the preposition is sometimes called the complement. Complement with an E, not complement with an I. It's called the complement because it completes the thought begun by the preposition. And so it's the complement. It, it complements it in the sense that it completes it. And the whole thing, the preposition plus the complement, is sometimes called the prepositional phrase. So you have the main part of a sentence and a prepositional phrase. And the prepositional phrase consists of a preposition plus its complement. Remember the preposition, certainly in English, can be uh, more than one word. Most often it's one word, but it's not unusual for it to be uh, more than one word. So once you've got that in your mind, and if it helps you just to scroll right back to the beginning of the video <laughs> and to listen to that again, um, uh, do so. And now I want to show you an example of how this works in English. Let's take a really simple sentence like this. Ben drank the lake. Well, what's going on here? Well, let's just um, parse some of the key words just to get our, our bearings and think about this. The verb is drank. It's a past tense verb in English. The subject is Ben. And in English, of course, that's determined by the word order. Subject verb, Ben drank the lake. This is the object. So if you were writing this in Greek, you'd go, uh, the verb would be uh, in whatever form it needs to be in order to express the past tense, which you haven't done yet, but don't worry about that. Ben would be in the nominative and the lake would be in the accusative. Now, there is no preposition in this sentence as it stands. So the relationship between the lake and the main part of the sentence is determined simply by the fact that, well, it's in the place where the object would normally be. So it's the direct object of Ben drank. What is it that's the thing that Ben drank? Well, it's very simple, it's the lake. So if you want to express the thought that Ben decided to get down on his hands and knees like Midianite, um, like uh, the, um, the soldiers of Gideon who went out to fight the Midianites and get down on his hands and knees and started to drink the lake, if you want to express that thought, then you would write it like this. Unlikely, however, that you want to express that thought. More likely, what you would want to do is to express a slightly different relationship between the lake and the main part of the sentence. For example, you might be envisaging that Ben is standing beside the lake, gazing outside at the beautiful sunset and having a beer as he's watching the sun go down over the distant horizon. And you do that by inserting the preposition beside the lake. Ben drank beside the lake. Notice this joins, 
beside joins the complement, the noun phrase, the lake, to the main part of the sentence, and as such it expresses the relationship between the complement and the main part of the sentence. He's standing next to it, beside it. But you could imagine a different preposition that goes in this little slot here in the sentence. You could imagine that Ben is perhaps in a boat or a canoe. He's out there, he's paddled out and he's got a bit hot and he's thirsty and he's a bit tired. So he pauses and as he sits in the boat, he gets his water bottle out and has a drink from it because you wouldn't want to be having a drink of anything alcoholic if you're out on the canoe in the middle of a lake. That'd be really silly. So then you say Ben drank and you need a preposition which expresses that relationship between the lake and Ben drank. Perhaps you'd use the preposition on. So notice the principle here. This preposition on or this preposition beside is like the link which joins this noun phrase to the main part of a sentence. If you change the noun, if you change the preposition, forgive me, if you change the preposition you're expressing a different kind of relationship between the complement and the rest of the sentence. Consider another example. Uh, I'm standing beside the table, I'm standing on the table, I'm standing under the table. The beside, on, under express different relationships between I'm standing and the table. The principle is the same. The preposition is like a kind of link which connects its complement, which is a noun phrase, to the rest of the sentence and expresses the relationship between them. Now once you've got that in your mind, then we can go and look at some examples in Greek, and that's what we'll do in the next video when we introduce the idea of prepositions in Greek. We'll see at that point, of course, that the, uh, it's necessary to think about how the different cases function in prepositions, because uh, uh, nouns and noun phrases uh, in Greek are declined. Nominative, accusative, genitive, dative. So we'll have to think about, well, how do the different cases operate in noun phrases, but that will all become clear as we flip over the page and look at the, uh, and make our way into the rest of this chapter of Duff. But hopefully that's uh, helped you just to introduce the idea of prepositions for those who, like me, certainly when I started learning Greek, I didn't have much in the way of formal grammatical training, and hopefully that's helped you a little bit. Okay, well keep working hard, uh, see you in the next video. If you've got any comments or any questions about this or anything else, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and keep working hard, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, five or six days a week, and we will soon have you reading the New Testament in Greek. Okay, God bless, see you next time.